Hello, good evening. My name is Phoebe Roberts. I am the creator of the Mrs. Hawking series, and I'd like to introduce something just a little bit different. Every year we debut a new piece of the Mrs. Hawking show. And when it came to planning this year's, we thought to ourselves, after the year we've had, we wanted something a little bit lighter that was going to make us laugh. So to that end, we proudly debut Gentlemen Never Tell, the very first Mrs. Hawking spin-off. It is a light Woodhouseian comedy starring Justin Hawking, Mrs. Hawking's other nephew, who you may remember was first introduced all the way back in part three. So we thank you for coming with us on this journey into another corner of the Mrs. Hawking universe, and we really hope you enjoy the show. Am I correct in understanding that you've become something of an amateur detective? I beg your pardon? You know, after that business with the murdered ballerina and you pointing the policeman in the direction of the murderess. You mean the murderess you dallied with? Yes, I suppose I have. I take it you've kept up with it in the years since? <laughs> you could certainly say that. Why do you ask? I was wondering, judging by the old letters. You've not been in the height of spirits of late. It's been a hard several years. Yes, since you're, uh, what was it, a mugging? I'd rather not talk about it. And it must not be easy to lose that stone girl. I'd be low too if I had to manage Auntie all on my own again. Is there a point to all this? Yes. Do you recall my trip to Venice a few years back? Uh, where you went to that masked ball? No, not just any masked ball. Masquerade, old boy. Can you understand what that means, as an old married London man? Have I mentioned I've been having a difficult time of late? Forgive me, I don't mean to rub it in. But during my little jaunt, I had quite an interesting adventure, and I thought it might amuse you to hear. Oh, God, this isn't good to one of those stories, is it? Because Reggie found one of your blue letters on my desk, and I assure you that is not how I wanted to have that talk with him. <sighs> No, no, not this time. Although there may be just a touch of it. I should expect no less. But I had rather a caper of my own to solve. And it took a bit of detectiving. So uh, if you've a moment, it might cheer you to hear about hmm. it. Ah, Venezia! Have you ever seen any city so lovely? I don't know, sir. I was fond of Norfolk. Pardon me, Mr. Morgan. I'd forgotten you had no poetry in your soul. Truly my cross to bear, sir. Still, steady on. We're not just here for your friend's engagement party. They expect us to bring in the Broadwater contract for the company. Of course, of course, you'll killjoy you. I still can't believe Theo, of all people, managed to get himself engaged to one of the most eligible heiresses in all of Europe. Heaven knows what carnival witch he had to bargain with for that. Still, rather a stroke of luck for us. Would give us a leg up on the competition, what with Pembrokes of London sniffing about. It may come down to a boxing match yet. Still, chin up! We're in a fabled romantic city, and for masquerade, no less. I thought all the bishops had decided everyone was having too much fun and had put a stop to it. Ah, but my old pal Lord Cornyn has holding his own. Lucky for us, my old schoolfellow has a grander sense of adventure than the Pope. And here in the Broadwaters? Is it to get lost in a place like this? And didn't you say everyone will be wearing masks? Oh, the mischief we could get up to with a little imagination. If you say so, sir, but we English aren't known for it. This week, Morgan, we're all bold and swarthy Italians. So a little less brain and a lot more gut, what say? I take it you've got plans beyond wooing Miss Broadwater's fortune? Wooing's the word for it. All the young ladies will have high expectations, and the gentlemen too, for that matter. Really, sir? A gentleman, too? Can't say I ever understood it, but have it your own way. No matter, old man. We can't all be philosophers. But you can bet I'll be ready for any adventure that comes my way. Come, sir. Oh, dear. Morgan, go fly a kite. Right, ho. Good afternoon, miss. You aren't here for Lord Cornyn's masquerade, are you? As a matter of fact, I am, sir, among other things. 
Why do you want to know? Wishful thinking, I suppose. There are some faces one hopes never to hide behind a mask. My goodness. May I be so bold as to ask your name? And here I thought you couldn't get any bolder. You may call me Rosalind, and you must be Mr. Hawking. I say, does my reputation precede me? In all possible ways. I suppose that saves a bit of time. What have you heard? Well, it certainly wasn't that you worked slowly. Let's just say I've been warned. I see. Well, if you give me the chance, I can prove that it's earned. Tempting, sir, but I'm not as dull as I look. You may take pride in your reputation, but I can't have my good name bandied about. And who would do such a thing? I know how you public school boys talk. Oh, indeed! And who was it that told you about me? Tell me, was it public school boys? It sounds as though I'm not the one who's the gossip. A fair cop. I've learned over the years that if I'm to have any opportunity of enjoying the company of ladies, I mustn't give them a reason to regret it. You really do have this worked out to a science. Oh, I'd love to offer you some references, but as I've said, a gentleman never tells. Well, I see you don't lack for courage, even if I can't vouch for skill. However, Mr. Hawking, you'll have to excuse me for now. You're in Venice for a party, miss. Might as well have some fun. Worry not, sir. I intend to. Oh, heavens. What doorman did you pay to let you in here? Why, if it isn't the Honorable Cassius Evans. I'd ask you the same, except I know you never paid your debts. Oh, where have you been? Better than you, I imagine. Last I heard, the Partridge Girl threw you over for your baby brother. <sighs> oh, yes. It must have been much better living under that rock for the last decade. I imagine that made it easier to sneak off with the footmen. You never do change, do you, Hawking? At least it means one of us is still handsome. What brings you to darken Theo's doorstep? Why, I'm a guest. Same as you are. Except I'm a great deal more fun, so he's asked me to see to the party arrangements. You know how close the old boy and I were back at Harrow. Really? Because I recall you shaking him down for pocket money and scapegoating him for smoking in the dormitory. Nonsense! We were thick as thieves. Of course he'd want me bringing a little class and taste before a climber like you brought down the grade. Are you still so bitter after all these years? I suppose I did break your heart. <laughs> Why, Hawking, you have changed after all. I never recalled you being funny before. Well, you had so little else to recommend you. I didn't want to horn in. That's rich, friend, given what you used to have to do with me. I knew you were still hung up, but I'm afraid that ship has sailed years ago. You arrogant imp. Save your sweet nothings. I've raised my standards since then. Try not to take it too hard. Oh, yes. Why wouldn't I want to miss all this? Come now. I know you, Honorable Cash. You've always got an angle for your playing. If you're not here for your undying love of me, you're here for some other end. Oh, how very cunning. Handsome man about town didn't cross the length of the continent for nothing. No wonder Miss Rosalind is so bowled over. Your wit must leave the ladies devastated. Oh well, best keep dreaming of me, darling. It'll keep you warmer than that girl. Why is that? What do you know? A great deal more than you. Now, I'll thank you to leave me to it. Fine. Have your schemes. And here I was considering you for old time's sake. Like I said, old boy, keep dreaming. I left that part out of my story to Nathaniel. The old boy's fragile that way. Oh, oh, steady on, miss. Begging your pardon. Not at all. I should have watched where I was going. Well, those are some fancy masks you've got there. Yes, my mistress sent me off for them. Indeed. My gents after them as well. I can show you where I got them, if that's where you're off to now. That would be kind of you. For now, I'm just a bugger off somewhere. My name's Morgan, by the by. Peter Morgan. Miss Cora Little, pleased to meet you. And what, Peter Morgan, have you done to warrant banishment? Twasn't me, miss. It's only... He's rather like a bloodhound. 
Or once you've sent it a fox, he'd rather you drop the leash and let him to it. So, it's one of those dogs, then. Careful there. That's my dog you're talking about. Fair enough. I shouldn't like to bandy about my lady's name. Even if she did have me once lock her fiancé in a study for a bit of quiet. <laughs> That's nothing. I once had to deter a persistent young lady by reporting a nasty bout of plague. I once had to dress as milady to confuse a particularly tenacious school governor. I've had to knot bed sheets for a daring second floor escape after a club prank gone disastrously awry. Oh, knotted bed sheets. Amateur hour. No, oh, but you'd have to shimmy down with the luggage. No. Empty handed. I suppose you've got me beat there. He's not so bad, really. I don't know how else I get to travel the world and have adventures. Now that's the life. If you ever tire of it, do let me know and I'll take your place. Do you think you'd notice the difference if I grew a moustache? <laughs> well, if you do, I can recommend a top-notch wax. But don't you like it here? In Venice, for certain. But usually we're shut away in a dreary old house in Exmoor. Nothing to do there but watch the rain and pray a restless ghost decides to haunt the place. Any luck so far? No! Even the ghosts find it dull. Well, I'm glad you're getting a bit of a holiday now. I hope you get a chance to take in some of the city while you're here. When I'm sent off to find fancy dress masks, at least. In that case, let me take you up on your offer to show me. My gent shan't remember I exist anytime soon. Well, why not? I have some time before dinner. We can compare whose adventures have been the most harrowing, <laughs> shall we? I say, is that my old friend Justin Hawking, or is it a highwayman wearing his clothes? A bit of both, perhaps, if it will impress these lovely ladies with you. Ah, yes. Ladies, you've already met my old school friend, the Honorable Cassius Evans. Uh, Justin Hawking of Hawking Capital and Investments. Permit me to introduce my fiance, Miss Annabel Broadwater, and her esteemed aunt, Mrs. Emmeline Broadwater. The pleasure's all mine, madam and mademoiselle. I should have known that the mistresses of this magnificent house would be ladies of such beauty and taste. One wouldn't think you'd have any charming friends, Theo. One might have hoped they'd have rubbed off on you. <laughs> uh, we can hope, madam. You are generous, lady, to host us here for the festivities. Yes, well, my late husband saddled me with this white elephant in this country of oily papists. Might as well see some use of the place. Madam is a romantic. Oh, indeed. You know, it would have been Auntie and Uncle's 30th wedding anniversary this week. What better way to celebrate than when they rock this party where no one can see anyone else's face? Theo is oh so clever about these things. Oh, we shall have to give you the grand tour. But just an old boy, have you taken a moment for the Broadwater's famed statue? I haven't. Uh, what is it? It was a wedding present, my late husband's pride. Oh, it's a most magnificent piece. A robust italic marble depicting the heroic death of Hector. It is quite renowned for realism. You can see the veins standing out in agony as Hector is dragged behind Achilles' chariot. Sounds a treat. I should be delighted to admire it any time except after dinner. Shall we go through to the cocktail hour? But where is the last member of our party tonight? The charming young lady Justin encountered in the courtyard. Oh, have you met Rosaline already? Briefly. Is she a friend of yours? Oh, her family and Theo's have been close for a long time. Surely you must have heard of the Pembrokes, haven't you? <laughs> I say, uh, Pembroke is in... Pembrokes of London, yes. Lord Harry is my uncle. Oh, didn't you know? Am I to take it that you are acting on his behalf in a professional capacity? I don't know what you mean, Mr. Hawking. I'm simply here to attend a lovely party. I will say, however, you're not the only one hoping to make the acquaintance of Mrs. Broadwater. And why would he be? Auntie is such a charmer. Now, that I believe that's all of us for dinner. Quincy! We'll be in for cocktails now before we change. Of course, miss. If the ladies and gentlemen would kindly follow me. He's... Pembroke, the secret you were crowing over? Do you think everything I do is about you? It's just a delightful bonus. I'm sure you thought I disappointed you enough. Are you surprised? I'll confess it. 
although it would explain why anyone would bother to trust their money to a wet lump of mulch like Lord Harry. Well, I can't disagree with that. Uncle Harry isn't charming at the best of times, especially when he's forgotten to trim the hair in his ears. But I'm afraid, sir, there's more than just propriety keeping me from your charming offer. Oh, not at all, miss. Why, I'd say this makes things infinitely more interesting. Do you fancy a spot of competition? With a slight raising of the stakes. If I win Mrs. Broadwater's contract, you must agree to spend the last evening of the masquerade as my guest. And what precisely would that entail? A chance, miss, to win you over. And what if I win? Use me as you would your spaniel. If I win, you must take Annabelle's maid companion to the ball. And after that, will you make me eat sweets and stay up past my bedtime? Trust me, dear, it's not for your sake. I'm happy to show a plain girl a good time. Never let it be said that Justin Lionel Hawking is ungenerous of spirit. Yes, the moment you accosted me, that's just what I thought, that you were quite the hero. You must terribly want me not to take things too hard if you're offering me a consolation prize. If I were, Mr. Hawking, it is because I am very good at what I do. You won't find this a walk in the park. I don't plan to go easy on you. Enough that I'll ask that when Hawking tosses out Lord Harry by the hair in his ears, you don't hold it against me at the ball. So let us agree. No hard feelings, then? Not at all. As I said, I am very good, and I am pleased for the chance to prove it. Of course, I didn't mind a challenge, but I had no idea just how challenging it would be that very night. Hello, what's all this then? I say, Quincy, are we being invaded? I do believe there's been a break-in, sir. A break-in? But this is a fine, respectable house. Yes, sir. And I imagine they were after the fine, respectable things. Well, what have they taken? What an awful commotion. What is it? It's the statue. Theo, you dolt, what's gone on? Have you knocked into something trying to sneak your way into the larder again? Well, no, madam. I told you, I was diverted on my way to the library. But what has happened to the statue? It appears someone's mistaken Hector for Medusa because the poor lad's been beheaded. What's all this? <gasps> it's the statue! Dear God, hasn't Achilles seen the boys suffered enough? Who is responsible for this? No one saw, madam. Whoever it was, it appears they fled. Is there nothing else missing? They came to just decapitate a statue. And my uncle's most beloved piece, just days before the anniversary of their wedding. Who would do such a thing? I say, what's made night owls of you lot? For the God's sake, it's the statue! Statue! By Jove! Rough night for poor Hector. What took you, Cassius? Drink yourself to sleep again. Forgive me that I wasn't already out prowling for someone else's bedroom. Enough of this idle chatter. Mrs. Broadwater, how distressing this whole business must be for you. What can we do to comfort you in this trying moment? Quincy, see that the rest of the house is secured. I am too overwrought to manage any more tonight. Of course, madam. Cora, send for Miss Dunn. Say her mistress is in need of a sleeping draught and to see that the glass is topped off. Certainly, Annabelle. Now, I hope you won't trouble over this. We shan't allow this to cast a pall on our engagement party. Yes, we wouldn't want the cloud over it to feel upstaged. Cora? Hello, Peter. I thought you were Miss Annabelle's maid. Yes, I thought you might. Companion, rather. Uh, I... I never meant to be so bold. Forgive me. Think nothing of it. I shouldn't have deceived you. Well, that's blown our beauty sleep all to hell. And here, Justin needs all the help he can get. The old lady will skin me alive for this happening during my party. Worry not, old boy. The thing is bound to turn up. It's made up of bleeding marble. How far could it have gone? Well, nothing to be done in the middle of the night. 
Let's sleep on it and deal fresh in the morning. Come along, Theo. Nothing a good stiff brandy can't fix. Or three. Well, I think this horse race has taken a turn, Morgan. What say you? Morgan? What's got into you? Oh, nothing, sir. Uh, do you really think that head will turn up? I do, rather. With hawking of the yard on the case. You mean to track down the blooming thing yourself? Imagine the gratitude Mrs. Broadwater shall pour down on he that restores her late husband's beloved statue. Enough, I should imagine, that she'll be more than happy to permit that clever soul the stewardship of her finances. Clever indeed, sir, but do you think you can do it? The detectiving, I mean. Nothing to it, my man. Why, did you know my little brother's taken it up as a hobby? I say, Morgan, if Nathaniel does it, how hard can it be? Oh, indeed. Oh, indeed. <laughs> Come now. Is that really what you think? Oh, it's only a bit of a boast. Like Achilles before he dragged our old marble friend. I see. And who does that make me, the fellow being dragged? Well, you'll see I soon ate my own words before long. After catching a few hours sleep, I'd sent Morgan off to do a little reconnaissance about the household. Well, my intrepid eyes and ears? I spoke to the Broadwater's housekeeper, Miss Graves. She swears on the Holy Ghost she saw all the staff to bed by ten o'clock. Seems she's right strict about her lights out times. And she's sure no one crept out in the middle of the night? I know I've climbed out of a dormitory window or two in my day. Well, they're on the third floor so it would call for quite the acrobat. And the stairs would take any lurker past Miss Graves' sitting room. She keeps an old blunderbuss above a fireplace. I did a bit of poking as well. The doors, windows, everything was locked, nothing forced or broken, which suggests that the assailant was already in the house, or at least in league with someone who was. My goodness, don't I sound like quite the detective already? So Hawking of the Yard believes it to be one of the guests then? Unless there's a creeping phantom haunting the halls, sworn to take vengeance on overbearing decor. But why would one of them behead the hostess's beloved statue? Who knows what wicked wiles beat within men's hearts? Revenge against Mr. Broadwater? Zealous defense of aesthetic good taste? Ours is not to reason why. Ours is but to do and die. Still, sir... A motive might point us in the culprit's direction. Motive, eh? Listen to you, Inspector Morgan. It's a solid tack. And a certain advantage over Miss Pembroke. Ah, yes, sir. A surefire way to win her affection. A sound drubbing and a test of skill. Duke Theseus wooed the Amazon Queen with his sword and won her love doing her injuries. I can't vouch for the lady's taste, sir. I only mean, to the likes of Rosalind, there's a thrill in competition, a little edge of friction. That's the way to impress a woman of her strong character. Trust me, I've played this game long enough by now to know. Sir, when a young lady catches your eye, what about her makes you think she might be game? Well, that's an easy one, old boy. I ask her. That's all? Your master is a clever man. But I can't read minds. I hope this doesn't too much disappoint you. Begging your pardon, sir, but I believe you've been slapped more than anyone I've ever met. Not every lady has the advantage of being both charming and broad-minded. What makes you suddenly ask? Why, Morgan, has someone caught your eye? Uh, please, Mr. Hawking! Come now. I'm only glad you've gotten into the spirit of things. Who is she? Sir, I'd rather not talk about it. All respect, Mr. Hawking, but you've no care for privacy at all. Why does everyone seem to think I'm so very indiscreet? Sir, you've had me bring you sherry in the bath. Fair enough. But heaven knows, I couldn't get on if I couldn't keep a secret. And I confess, I'm dreadfully curious. Sir, I'm not ready to say just yet. As you like it, old boy. Still, I wouldn't be half the swordsman I am if I didn't have a few tricks up my sleeve. Why, well, I used to have a pack of boys that would follow me about, buy me drinks just to see me in action. Just hoping 
could watch and learn. What did they used to call it, sir? Uncle Justin's school for rakes? <laughs> You're very fortunate, Mr. Morgan. I'll teach you for free. And all that works! Like a charm. I've seen it with my own eyes. May I introduce Mr. Morgan, an alumnus of the first graduating class. It's true. I once saw him have a pair of twins slapping and hair pulling with nothing but a raised eyebrow across a dinner table. Ha! <laughs> Miss June and Miss July. Like sugar and spice. Oh, good gracious. Oh, you have to forgive Morgan here. He's a straight-laced sort. Of course, you're headed for the straight and narrow yourself now, aren't you? Uh, yes, I suppose. Congratulations, old boy, on your engagement. Annabella seems like quite the firecracker. Oh, yes, I suppose. I say, old man, is everything all right? What? What makes you ask that? Well, begging your pardon, but if I were to plight my troth for all eternity, I'd hope I'd have more to say about my beloved than... Oh, yes, I suppose. Oh, well, yes, I suppose. Are you quite sure? Well, since you asked. Yeah, of course. Make no mistake, Miss Annabelle's a lovely girl. Very lovely, quite so. And so charming and funny and such a joy to be around. Couldn't agree more. You think so? Of course. You want her? I beg your pardon. Please, Justin, old boy, you've got to understand. When a man offers me his fiancée, I very much hope to. That's a mistake I'll not be making again. Are you quite sure you don't want her? It would make me cracking excuse for me, and from what I've heard, might be some consolation to her. I told you. It's not worth the trouble. Never again. If I may, my lord, what seems to be troubling you and the Honourable Miss Broadwater? Oh, it's all become quite the mess. Things were lovely when Annabelle and I first started courting. She would make fun of me and I would laugh. She would tell me what to do and I would do it. She would tell me to go away and I wouldn't. Until now we're engaged and things are seeming so dreadfully final. I find myself wondering if I haven't made rather a mistake. Oh, Theo, you old wag. You always do this. Decide the sun rises and sets upon a girl until she looks back at you. You only want them when you can't have them. Here now, that's not fair. You were just the same at school. Remember that barmaid at the Criterion? You used to moon over her when she emptied her mop bucket in the alley. Until she marched up to you, kissed you, and soaked your trousers in mop water. A gentleman wouldn't hold a boyhood fancy against me. A gentleman wouldn't ask me to deflower his fiancée. But this isn't just a fancy. There's someone else. Someone who makes me see what love truly is. Oh, God. And what miraculous creature has brought on this revelation? Well, there's the rob. It's Miss Annabel's companion, Miss Cora Little. No. I beg your pardon, sir? Uh, nothing, my lord. Only Miss Little? I know. It sounds like something out of a fairy tale. A lordling who has never known love before falling for a Venus of penniless but honourable birth. Yes, imagine that. Oh, but she makes me feel all the things the poets sing of, and I feel it can't be ignored. You are making it powerfully difficult. Can't you just break things off? Oh, you know how it is. You chase after a woman for weeks. She decides you want to get married. And what's a decent chap to do? <laughs> it would be terribly ill-mannered, and besides, the old lady would skin me alive. Mrs. Broadwater hardly seems the type to see her plans <laughs> fall apart without anything to skin about it. Oh, but surely you see I can't marry Annabelle now, not when my soul belongs to another, so will you help me? You mean help you out of your engagement? Oh, yes, I knew you would understand. You've been a true friend to me ever since the day Professor Landridge almost caught me in his office at school. You hid me beneath his coat. Well, I should hate to think of all this inflicted on Miss Annabelle. Ah, oh, I shan't forget it. Anything you want in reward, I shall give. Yes, including your fiancé, apparently. Thank you so much, old boy. Well, if you excuse me, gentlemen, I must choose the hors d'oeuvres for my wedding. And here I thought we wouldn't have to spend every moment working, Morgan. But it seems we've another job to carry off. Are you quite all right? You look as though you've seen a ghost. Oh, uh, not at all, sir. Just what's all in front of me. Yes, well, Theo has that effect on people. No matter... We were discussing the battle plans for your romantic campaign. It's no matter, sir. We have so many more pressing things to attend to. 
Now, as you can see, Nathaniel, I had quite a full plate before me. Springing Theo, my bet with Rosalind, solving the mystery, and of course, doing my duty by the firm. Oh, bless you for remembering that. So, you can imagine, next time the party was all met for tea, I had rather a narrow tightrope to walk. Whatever did the policeman do? The gendarme dragged her away, her eyes full of longing for what would never be. And as our gaze met for that one final time, I called out after her, we'll always have the Mariinsky ball. <sighs> Still dining out on that little jaunt? What was that, two years later? I was there, that's not what happened. Oh, so I embellished a little for the story's sake. Haven't you ever had to sing for your supper? My God, old boy, is that all true? Every word. Oh, for Christ's sake. To think, a ballet dancer and a murderer. One never knows what hidden depths a sweet smile may conceal. Which puts me in mind of last night's excitement. Oh, indeed. Does our resident detective have suspicions of us? You sneer, but I tell you, any one of us could be hiding a diabolical statue vandal's heart beneath our genteel exteriors. Oh, for heaven's sakes! Do you take us all for murderous Russian harlots? I should say the stakes in your story were much higher. You must have been in terrible danger. How exciting. Oh, hardly the first romantic assignation to have it out for Justin Hawking. Lucky for us all, I'm handy with a crumpet knife. Wouldn't you say, Mrs. Broadwater? A common skill among this lot, given how much you've all been packing away. What was that you observed of Theo? A scheme to sneak off to the larder the other night? We're here now, that's not fair. I told you that wasn't me. I've no idea where that steak and kidney pie disappeared to. Yes, because they're so very easy to misplace. <laughs> Speaking of misplacing, Theo, do you recall hiking on the moor back in school and we lost you at the wrong turn in the swamp? Well, I heard a bird calling and I thought it was Teddy Marcot laughing at me. What's gotten into you, Hockey? We're running down Theo. Help me, won't you? Oh, what fun. Yes, uh, we found him neck deep in the mud with a feral pony chewing on his cap. The sounds of his crying led us right to him. Crying, Lord Cornyn? Made of quite stern stuff, I see. That pony looked very large from that angle. Yes, Theos is sensitive soul, unlike you lot of Neanderthals. Oh, indeed. When all the boys were chasing barmaids, Theo hardly ever called them by his mother's name. <sighs> Too much? Mr. Morgan, would you kindly clear away these plates before I give in to my secret desire to smash them over these brutes' heads? Uh, of course, miss. Hello, Peter. How have you been finding Venice? It's a lovely city, Miss Little. Thank you. And what of your masks? Did they meet with your standards? That'll be for Mr. Hawking to say. Thank you, miss. Uh, what shall I do with the plates, Mr. Quincy? Clear them to the cart to take to the kitchen. Can't we just use the dumbwaiter? Uh, the door stuck shut, and I haven't had time to see it repaired. Mr. Morgan, is uh, everything quite yes, all right? Yes, certainly. Clearing up the plates. Uh, Mr. Hawking, I think you're quite finished then. Beg pardon. I say, Morgan, I'm just started on the clotted cream. And I think I'm getting closer to finding who the culprit is. Sir, your plate then? Uh, yes, uh, my plate. Do see it out of here. Quickly now, before our lovely tea is disrupted. I think it's rather too late for that. Quincy, would you get the doors, please? There's been entirely too much merriment for my taste. Go apologize, Theo. You know, she still hasn't forgiven you for that time you mistook her special teacup and passed out drunk on the croquet lawn. Oh, God! Just what game do you think you're playing? Why, only investigating, miss. What's the trouble? Guilty conscience? Drop it, Hawking. You're trying to make Theo look even more like an absolute pillock than he already is. Why ever would I do that? 
is beyond me to say because God and heaven knows Theo does not need the help. A fair cop. So listen here, you glib grinning cocks. My aunt already believes that that boy could not find his ass with a bloodhound and a regiment of Gurkhas. If you push his considerable shortcomings any harder, she'll disapprove the marriage and toss him out thumb over tea kettle. And that would be terrible? I swear to merciful Jesus, if any of you do anything to ruin this for me, I shall ruin you. Have I made myself clear? It was all Justin's idea. Anything for a lady. That's the spirit. Now, extricate yourselves from my business before I do it for you. Well, you heard the lady? Coward! Whatever are they running from? I think she might be my dream girl. You truly are brazen, aren't you? Don't be jealous now. My earlier offer still stands. In all frankness now, Hawking, stand down. And here I thought you weren't afraid of a little competition. But it's not only for our bet. I mean well, believe me. Oh yes, heaven knows a woman's never had any trouble at all from well-meaning men. Be reasonable. I love the dear old boy, honestly I do. But do you really think Annabelle would be happy married to a clod like Theo? Do you think that's Annabelle's biggest problem? I'm sorry, does she fight fires and rescue orphans? For Christ's sake. Before you come riding in on your white horse and decide what saves her day, consider for a moment what you know of her day and who you're actually saving. Because it isn't who you think. What on earth does that mean? If you have to ask, you ought not to involve yourself. She's right, you know. Learned that myself the hard way over the last few years. Well, I hadn't yet! Of course not. Because you're a hawking. And we all love learning things the hard way. Peter, I was looking for you. Ah, uh, Miss Little, is there something I could do for you? You rushed out so quickly, I was hoping we might talk some more. That's very kind of you, Miss, though I'm certain you might find the talk in the tea room more on your level. Is that what you think? It's not for me to say, Miss Little. No one in theirs ever had to spike a teapot or smuggle a live goose into a boudoir? Have you had to do that? We will find out if we talk. I'm not certain that's a good idea, Miss Little. Please, Peter, it's Cora. I'm not posh, if that's what you're thinking. Just the daughter of an impoverished cousin who works as a companion to earn my keep. Same as you. I work for my keep as well, but I'm no one's cousin at all. So, you and I can't be friends. From what I hear, you've got much better prospects than a friend in someone else. What? Perhaps it's not for me to say, but there's someone who can do a great deal more for you than the likes of me. Oh no. Oh, Peter, you must understand. Ah, Morgan, there you are. <laughs> Miss Little. Ah, yes, I was looking for the uh, stack of dirty teacups. So that's where they'd gone to. I been wondering. I was just leaving, sir. Oh, r don't rush off. Unless you've got someone waiting for you. Not at all, Mr. Hawking. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, still, if I may say, a charming girl like you must draw a certain quality of admirer, even if he's too shy to say so. I'm sure I don't know what you mean, sir. M Mr. Hawking, if, if we could attend to business, sir, the, the teacups. Ah, yes. The teacups. I shall leave you to them, sirs. Well, so much for talking up Theo. May I recommend my old pal, miss? He's a cracking fellow, except he's about to be married to someone else. Perhaps after the wedding, you could meet for a stroll. Bloody Theo. What did she want of you? Uh, nothing, just to, to talk, I think. To talk? With you? No, sir, with the bleeding head. What's got you so peppery? Nothing, it's just... She wants to make friends. And you have too many to be accepting applications? Sir, she's one of them. One of them tough girls. I don't know what to say to the likes of her. <laughs> say to her? Why, whatever she cares to hear. Beg pardon? You know those maid companions. They see and hear all manner of juicy matter. You know, brother like you? Not entirely like me. You can make use of it. She can tell us what Rosalind's up to, or what to say to free Theo from Annabelle. 
Or if she's spied anything of the bloody statue heist. What? No, sir, I... I can't do that, sir, I can't. Why ever not? I don't... No, sir, I... I find I rather want to make friends too. Well, oh, that's capital! Make use of it! That's just it, sir, I can't... Just make use of her. It wouldn't be right. Oh, indeed. Well, forgive me if I don't know what to say. I can hardly be expected to have prepared for this sort of betrayal. Don't say that, Mr. Hawking. Well, what would you call it after eight years' faithful service? Haven't I been your friend in kind? I thought we were in this together. But we're not, sir. Not all in that way. I beg your pardon? Don't take it wrong, sir. We've had such fun over the years, I've no complaints, but it's all on your terms. I, I know that's how it must be, and you've been very kind, but this girl, she's been very decent to me, and I can't just take advantage of her for our own ends. Is there an understanding between you? So we've only just met, it's just, we're not all like you. Some of us can't go on on our own, some of us, people leave marks on. I see. As my father used to say, you know why Samson loved Delilah. Only that he did. I never meant to make you feel as though all I cared was what use I could make of you. I'm very glad of my place, sir, and very happy in it, but the way you flit about from woman to woman and the occasional gent, perhaps you don't know what it is to need someone. Here now, Morgan. I'm not made of stone. Of course not, but it's not the same as never having your heart break. Wrong again, old boy, I'm afraid. Really, sir? There was a woman I saw something of when I was a younger man. Beautiful, clever, and funny. All the usual specs. <laughs> but she had an edge to her. A steel blade and a velvet glove. <laughs> I've always been soft for a girl who's just a bit sharp on me. Sounds about right, sir. Of course, it never came to anything. She had no patience from I that wandered, nor should she. So it was only a matter of time. But I confess, I missed her when she was gone. Did you... did you love her? Not in the way you mean. But I wanted her to think better of me than she did. It's not often a man has shown exactly who he is. What became of the lady, sir? She married my brother. He was always the good boy. I'm... I, I'm sorry, sir. I thought... I... I thought I knew. Nothing in it, old boy. Only, I shouldn't like you to believe I have no need of anyone. Because I have need of you as my support and my true friend. I should be very sorry if you didn't know that. I'm, I'm sorry too, sir. But... We, we have the head now. Surely that's something. Yes. If the culprit stashed it in the dumbwaiter, they can't have meant to just keep it there. Eventually the staff would have tried to fix it, or some raffish young boy would climb inside for a prank if my school days were any indication. You've ridden in a dumbwaiter, sir? <laughs> I was rather more limber in my school days. And a few stone lighter, I imagine. <laughs> Manners, old boy. At any rate, I'm certain the thief intends to come back for it. But when? It, it shan't be too long or they should be discovered. But we're out in the open in the middle of the house where people are always walking. And I doubt they'd feel safe under mere cover of darkness. Not after the debacle of the evening they struck. My Jove! The masquerade! The ball, you mean? The whole house should be occupied by it, even the servants. And even if the black guard is spotted, everyone would be wearing masks. It's if, perfect! If we stake out the dumbwaiter in the middle of the ball, we'll catch them in the act! Precisely! Make ready our masks, dear fellow! Because, as I believe the detectives say, I think we're hunting game! Well, what do you think of my detective work? Did you really mean that? What you said to your man? About riding in the dumbwaiter? About Clara? Ah, oh, yes that. Did you? I'm, I'm a rake, not a liar. Are you surprised? I never could tell. Whether it wounded only your pride or 
something else. I'm not like Morgan or you. I don't believe there's just one someone I'm meant to walk the way with. But there are some that left their mark. And when I didn't leave the same, well... You never like to talk about it. You never like to hear about it. Though I can't say I blame you. I suppose in my old age I have gained a little perspective. Plus it has been 13 years, she's hardly pining across the moors for Heathcliff. Really? Ready for any gory details then? I said I'd grown, not been canonized. <laughs> I must say, I am glad you can speak to your man that way. I know you've always gone your own way, but it cheers me to know you have someone you can rely on. Are you saying you worry for me? Well, I hardly like to think of you out there all alone. Goodness, my baby brother worries for me. I suppose that makes it all the more bearable how desperately you envy me. Envy you? Not in the least. Oh, really? Why then was that letter of mine out on your desk when my sweet nephew could find it? I told you. I'm not Canada. <laughs> well, at any rate, the first night of the masquerade was upon us, and it was time to put my plan into effect. Are you ready, dear fellow? As, as ready as I can be, but are you certain it's the only way, sir? Are changing places? Morgan, we must give to all and sundry that I'm thoroughly occupied with the ball. That way, no one will wonder at my disappearance while I lie in wait at the dumbwaiter. Now hand over that mask, and let's see you put on mine. But couldn't I do the staking out, sir? No one at the ball would miss the likes of me. Do you want to be the one to brawl with that hardened criminal, then? A brawl, sir? Do you fancy yourself the scrappier between the two of us? May I ask in God's name why? Well, I have got the stick. And if worse comes to worst, I shall stay the black guard with my commanding presence. Commanding presence? You won't be a boot boy at the Hotel Savoy. I thank you for your concern, my man. But, buck up, you're about to have some fun. What most men dream of all their lives, you shall get to live. But, sir, I shall have to pretend to be you. However shall I manage? Oh, you've had years to observe me. Try not to enjoy it too much. And if you don't see me in a few hours' time, come find whatever chair the villains tied me to. Won't be the first chair I've walked in and found you tied to. Bon chance, dear fellow. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. All right. Um, let's have it. Ah, uh, Justin Hawking. Public school, slight... Duck walk. Uh, find the nearest murderer and have it off with them in the cloakroom. Hello, sir or madam. Do you fancy me? Oh, God help us. Ah! Miss Pembroke, was it? Hello! You recognize my mask. And the particular cadence of your bustle as you walk. Ah, Mr. Hawking. I recognize you now. Well, I am known by my elegant leg. How lovely to see you tonight, or not see you, as the case may be. Then how do you know it's lovely? A ah, charitable hope, perhaps. I mean, who knows what wicked wiles beat within men's secret hearts. I know, by the way you watch my bustle. Allow me to leave and permit you another opportunity. Uh, no, no, uh, that is, now that I've caught you, I shan't let you leave without begging a dance. And what makes you think I'd ever dance with you? Well... I do believe that there's a bet on. Here now, nobody's won that bet yet. Perhaps. But how shall you know if you want to, if you don't get a taste? And Annabelle said you were a perfect brood. Well, lucky for you. She's right. Uh, forgive me, my dancing's not quite as sharp as my wit. I would have thought a fellow of your background would have danced since boyhood. <laughs> well, I... Imagine my dancing master wasn't quite as pretty as my governess. Never the rake, aren't you? I see where the traveling life appeals. Always someone new to charm. Yeah, now, as they say, not all who wander. I like that. Why, take my man Morgan. 
No! Shall I then? <laughs> oh, gracious. <gasps> Are you blushing beneath that mask? Never saw that of Justin Hawking. Uh, of course not. Only, uh, Morgan's a gentle soul. A romantic, one might say. Right one. One might. Uh, certainly he's fond of the old boy, uh, of me, that is. But he's rather the sobering balance to my flights of fancy. I thought he was a romantic. He, he is uh, a sober romantic, a very grounded sort. A very solid, very sensible sort of romance. Ah, you have quite a bit to say about your valet. Well, I'd be lost without him. And rather the right people know. For example, Miss Annabelle's companion, Miss Little. Miss Little? What would Mr. Morgan care for her to know? Well, as I understand it, he rather gave her the impression that he didn't care for her friendship. Ah, yes, I'd heard something of that. If that were the case, he should like her to know that he's very sorry that he did. And it can't hurt his ladies and gentlemen of distinction vouch for him. Never fear, sir. I shall pass along the message. Thank you, Miss Pembroke. I'm certain you have to make the rounds with all the other adoring gentlemen. The night's only just begun, Mr. Hawking. I think I've time for one more before I'm missed. What are you doing here? Oh, who goes there? I could ask you the same. It's only Mr. Hawking's man, Peter Morgan. No, you aren't. I could be. That is to say, I most certainly am. Then what are you doing lurking in the dark out here? I, uh, wanted the quiet. I don't like having fun, you see. Uh, and what about you? Uh, I'm Cora, companion to Miss Annabelle. No, you aren't. How dare you? How would you know? Why would Cora be out here creeping in the dark? For your information, I like creeping. <laughs> no, you don't. How would you know what Cora likes? It seems more and more than you do. No. Who are you and what are you doing? Oh, it's me, all right? Why, Miss Pembroke? How can a lady of your breeding conjure in such deception? Why, it's more than a simple bloke in service like myself can bear. Oh, come off it, Justin. Is that how you think Morgan talks? I don't know. Sometimes I drift when he goes on. What are you up to anyhow? I'm springing a trap for the statue vandal. A trap into which you have blundered. Oh yes, you've caught me. I've hated that statue the moment I first laid eyes on it the night before. Then whatever are you up to, pretending to be that girl? I thought you were in the ballroom. I believe you've answered your own question, Sir Isaac Newton. I traded her my mask so Theo wouldn't sneak after her and try to press his suit again. You did? So did Morgan and I. Pardon me, but I doubt either of you would fit into her dresses. I meant Morgan and I swapped. So either I've done Morgan a great favour, or thrown him rather to the wolves. Want to put a wager on which? At least Theo won't get into trouble and Cora will have a few hours' peace. I don't know why everyone's so wrapped up in keeping Theo. We all know he's adult, and it isn't as if Annabelle needs the money. Oh, but that's just it. Annabelle's money's all in trust, to be released when she marries a man of appropriate social standing at her aunt's approval. <laughs> what her aunt thinks he's a pillock! Oh yes, but she finds his peerage very smart. Ah. Such is the lot of those whom society will not indulge trotting the globe, doing as they please. Really? She who lives in glass globes ought not to trot stones. You mean she who must pretend her uncle does all of her work of consequence and won't drag her home again if she can't seal the deal, which is looking increasingly likely with the mood Mrs. Broadwater has been in. Oh, I see. Rosalind, we can call off the wager. I only meant it as waggish flirtation. I never meant to trap you into something you didn't care to do. There's no fun in that. Only too glad to bugger off. If you don't really like me after all. Don't like you? Justin Hawking, I am you. I beg your pardon? You've seen it. That's why you're after me, unspeakably vain as you are. I travel the world, I wrangle and deal, I dazzle with my wit, my charm, my striking good looks. 
And yes, Mr. Hawking, I've no interest in the conventional genteel path, because I'd rather dally with all manner of fascinating people I meet along my way. You don't say. I do say, or I would, if the world would permit me the way it does you. <sighs> I'm afraid, sir, the only real difference between us is the only one that matters to most. Not to me. I meant what I said when I don't judge. Perhaps you don't, but others will. Even if I should risk you, I risk any other blasted gossip that chances to find out about it. Even if you are as discreet as you say, there's always the servants or the hosts or some other mean-spirited judge and jury who would shun me forever for a rumour. I can't argue. I've seen it. What woman could get away with what you do as a matter of course? Proposition the first good-looking stranger you see, flirt with the host, and laugh off your roguish reputation over the fish course because it only makes them love you more. So know this, sir. I would take you up on your offer. Indeed, I wish I could take you to the upstairs bedroom and show you a go-round like you've never had before. Because I would mean that I could. Golly! See here, Rosalind. Shh! Beg your pardon, I'm doing my best. No, not that. Did you hear that? By Jove, someone's coming! Hide! Ah! Stop where you are, statue vandal! Ah! Got the brigand! Damn it! My gammy knee! Blast it all! Ah! Bloody buggering hell! Rosalind! His mask! You? Cash? You absolute ass! Using my gammy knee against me! And beheading the statue too, I suppose. Cassius Evans did the damn thing. Must have done! He'd hardly lift a finger otherwise, much less risk a biff to his pretty face. But why? For what possible reason? <laughs> How in blue blazes should I know? Perhaps to have a chance to take a swing at me. <laughs> Thank heaven neither of you can throw a punch to save your lives. But take your head out of your own arse for a moment. Do you really think that Popinjay would deface a bloody great statue in a house where he is a guest for no reason at all? I'm sure he can have plenty of opportunity to explain himself to Mrs. Broadwater. So that's your plan then? To turn him over as the statue vandal so Mrs. Broadwater will, I don't know, invest with hawking capital and breathless gratitude? I shall be paid most handsomely in the look on his smug face. But if the lady is so moved, who am I to gainsay her? So you'll sacrifice your old friend just to win. Oh, don't be melodramatic. <laughs> he wouldn't risk all this unless it were very dear indeed. Does he strike you as having been in a good way these last several years? I don't know if I would know. Well, I'd think on it if I were you, and if the consequences you imagine fit the crime. Just to satisfy a spat from 20 years ago. <laughs> Remember, Justin, we can't all do what you do. Mr. Hawking? Mr. Quincy, uh, excuse me. I was looking for Mr. Evans. I know, sir. I'm afraid the business with the statue's head has given you rather the wrong impression. I felt it was my duty to correct it. How do you know about that? I fear from the events of this evening that you've come to believe the Honorable Cassius responsible for the theft? The theft? Not mere vandalism? No, sir. Theft was the intention, and I can speak to that because the intention was mine. You, Mr. Quincy? Yes, sir. And though I'm afraid I'd rather botch the job, so to speak. I was hoping to make off with the piece to sell it, but instead I broke it in the effort. When Lord Cornyn emerged, I feigned the same consternation as the rest of the household. I see. Up to now, I had been making a cowardly effort to conceal it, but if you are to put the blame on Mr. Evans, I felt I had the duty to speak. The question remains, however, what exactly Cassius was up to when he came back to retrieve the head? Mr. Evans knows nothing about it. He was on a mission for that dumbwaiter. Come now, man. What's going on here? Oh, for God's sake. Martin, what are you doing? Confessing, sir, to my plot to steal the statue. <laughs> oh, no. Bless you. 
but no. I've already confessed, sir. Best not to involve yourself in this mess. Enough, Martin. He saw me at the dumbwaiter. The jig is well and truly up. I suppose you know now, Justin. And you've come to make me pay for it. Whatever possessed you? You were always a schemer. But to attempt an art heist? For what possible reason? We were hired, if you must know, to rid the place of that hideous thing. You, a gentleman thief? As you can see, I'm hardly Black Bart. But heaven knows I need the money. So we made the attempt. And you corrupted Broadwater's own man into it. Rather the other way round, and that's the truth. I was the one committed, and since I knew of Mr. Evans' circumstances, I drafted him into the operation. But why would you go to Cassius of all the useless people? And why would you fall on your own sword for him? Oh. Oh, I see. I... I don't know what you mean, Mr. Hawking. Martin, that's enough. But Mr. Evans... Martin! Justin knows. And better than most. Oh. <laughs> There's only one uh. thing Cash was ever good at. I suppose that would be enough to do it. Martin, will you give me a moment with my old friend? Are you certain? I am, my dear. Well then, there you have it. Have what? Name it. All the power, proof that you're the better man, whatever you'd like. It's only all you've ever wanted for 20 years. Yes, my whole brain has been taken up all that time with you. <laughs> so laugh it up, old boy. I'll just wait patiently until you decide my fate. Is that all you have to say for yourself? What I don't understand is why this? Just for what? Money? Excitement? Oh, come now, Hawking. Are you really that thick? You know what my life is. Singing for my supper in my friends' houses. Playing the party boy so they have reason to keep me around. Yes, I've heard the tribulations of the penniless aristocrat. And we're not as young as we used to be. The waggish bachelor antics wear thinner when you're on the wrong side of 30. Do they? You think you get by on charm? You ought to try it these days without all your money behind you. Even you won't be handsome forever. And I'm not you. So when Quincy said he had a job for us, well, we were hardly in a position to say no. Quincy there is quite the gallant. He's a man of character. I love him, you know, if you can understand that. I suppose I should hope so, given what he's willing to do for you for all that he engineered an art heist in his mistress's house. Don't you dare, Justin. You've no idea. So people keep telling me. Oh, Cassius, what am I to do with you? What's your intention? Turn me over to win the approval of the old lady? Are you so sure that will pan out as you've planned? And what would you have me do? Hide everything for you because you've been dealt a hard hand? And <laughs> that you do whatever you please? Not whatever I please, just this. You know this is the least of what I've been forced to hide. Can't you understand it that? It isn't as if I haven't anything of my own to hide, Cash. Then you ought to have some pity. What you and I had, I've no illusions of it. A romantic lark. But I did think we were friends, Justin. Does that mean nothing to you? Dear fellow, do you think after all these years, we'd be here if it didn't? Some people leave their mark. What are we to do, old boy? Well, who hired you? Perhaps that's enough for Mrs. Broadwater. <laughs> but Justin, therein lies the problem. If Mrs. Broadwater hears of any of this, I'll have done it all for nothing. Whatever does that mean? Mr. Hawking to speak with you, madam. Good evening, Mrs. Broadwater. Thank you for seeing me. Yes, I am most magnanimous, despite the lateness of the hour. Indeed. 
And how did you enjoy the party? Oh, spare me your mewling! Why ever do you invade my sitting room? I assure you, madam, only on a matter of great importance. I know what happened to your statue. Well, that is important. Madam, if you'd permit me to- Thank you, Quincy. That will be all for now. Well, Mr. Hawking, will you keep me in suspense? Pardon my sense of theater, madam, but I've done some detective work. Examining the clues, laying the trap, stringing it to catch the culprit. And I confess what I found surprised me. Fancy that. The mystery was mysterious. Is there a point to all this? I should say so. It was you, madam. You stole the statue. <laughs> Pray repeat yourself, dear boy. For a moment there, you lost your mind. Let us dispense with this. It has not become my age or your dignity. <sighs> and here I thought you were yet another shiftless simpleton like Theo. A common misconception. I'm not as gormless as I look. <sighs> the one time it would have been of use. Who told you that strutting cockerel Cassius Evans? I should have known that biscuit would crumble. I told Quincy to lift with his legs, but he insisted he needed a second back. He didn't say a word about you, but none of you counted on having a brilliant detective in your midst. I deduced that when your faithful man, Quincy, struck a blow against the property of his mistress, that blow could only come by her orders. I can hardly say I blame you. The thing was horrid. Horrid? It was nightmarish. I could hardly sleep at night without hearing Hector's death screams. My only question is, why would you employ your own man in secret to abscond with your own statue? And here you said you weren't so gormless. That hideous statue was my husband's pride and joy. Do you think I could simply toss it out on the rubbish heap? People would be scandalized. Without the subterfuge, I was stuck with the thing, unless I wanted to hear the whispers of the neighbors every time I walked by. I suppose I hadn't thought of that. Fancy that. I ought to more and more. I suppose you too carry a secret pain you must hide from the rest of the world? Don't be absurd, because I'm an Englishwoman, not a jellyfish. Righto, my mistake. The only thing that matters now, Mr. Hawking, is what you plan to do. You know my subterfuge and how I'll not have it bandied about. What will it cost me for you to keep your clever mouth shut? Are you making an offer? For example, I'm aware of your ulterior motive in attending this little party, beyond the young ladies at any rate. You're on marching orders from your investment firm. I suppose one of those is true. And I know you're not the only one. Miss Pembroke has been pushing her interest as well. What if I told you that the Pembrokes could lump it and I'll throw in my lot with Hawking Capital? You'll make assurances in exchange for my silence? I swear on Hector's severed head. So, Justin, my dear, shall we make a deal? There you are. Are you ready? Ready as I can be. Have you called everyone together? Yes, they'll be here. Only I haven't found Annabelle. Damn. Can you get her aside as it goes? I can climb atop a moving train, Justin, but there's no guarantee I can shift tracks from up there. Then, my dear Miss Pembroke, do you trust me? Oh, do you juggle elephants? In which case, permit me to bend over backwards. Save that for later. For now, it's enough to follow my lead. Ah, there you all are. Thank you for joining me here. Yes. You've turned us all out for this unheard of ritual of afternoon tea. Ah, but Miss Broadwater, a very singular one. Now, you may be wondering why I've gathered you together here. Besides the salon and biscuits? Or did Hawking of the Yard require us in the parlor for some accusing? Uh, both, for us. Both, fortunately. No sense in wasting a good biscuit. But I must inform you all, I've solved the mystery of who vandalized Mrs. Broadwater's beloved sculpture, so the culprit can be brought to the consequences so richly deserved. You have? Oh, how exciting. Must you, sir. After all, it is highly irregular to disturb Mrs. Broadwater's tea. I'm afraid so, Quincy. Justice waits for no biscuit. Well then, don't make a meal of it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have received all the clues, 
followed the trails, interviewed the witnessing parties. Having discovered that all relevant facts and figures, I have applied my singular brain to the task of teasing out the truth to which they led. Oh, for God's sake, Justin. It was Theo. Theo did it. What, what? I, what? I say what? Precisely. Do you mean me? Do you see any other Theos about? Oh, but I never. I was still asleep. Or is that what you wanted us to believe? Yes, because I was. No, dear fellow, I have seen through your cunning. You thought you could get away with disposing of the piece. Were you to join this family, you'd have to bear the sight every day of the ghastly thing. His thoughts, not mine. But that you could not conscience. Is this what you're doing, Hawking? It's my solemn duty, madam. Wouldn't you say, Cassius? Why, I should have thought of myself. I say, chaps, why ever would you do this? Because, Theodore, knowing what I know, I can't stand by and let you marry this woman. Oh, oh, I see. And I don't see how her esteemed aunt could consent to unite him with her ward now. Isn't that so, Mrs. Broadwater? Oh, Theo, how could you? I beg your pardon? I'm afraid I'm entirely not good enough for you, dear Annabelle. No hard feelings, what what? Most certainly hard feelings. You've ruined our engagement. You must know, Annabelle, you deserve a better man than all that. I deserve to have my inheritance released. Do you think that I would stand for this booby if I didn't need someone with at least enough backbone to hold up a wedding suit? The fact remains that the girl must be married even if this chicken will not satisfy. Oh, but my dear lady, don't you see? There has been a man suffering in silence for sweet Annabelle all this time, afraid to speak his heart when she was betrothed to another. What on earth? Oh yes, a gallant soul who placed the happiness of his beloved and his old schoolfellow above even his own. But now, since she is free, can speak his feelings plain. What? If is that why you're putting this show on, Hawking? Who, me? Uh, oh my god, I, I mean, that is to say... No, not Justin. Cassius. Cassius? What now? Yes, old friend, dear. You need hide no your devotion no longer. I say I don't... I... I can't. Uh, Are you quite certain that you haven't mistaken Cassius for some other fellow, such as nearly any other fellow on the planet? Just think, Annabelle, if you married this man, who would serve as your husband in the best way he knew how. Who would live in your house. And follow your lead. And lend you his peerage. And see you receive all your parents' money. Why, Cassius, I never knew you cared. I, well, I, that is to say, I... Mr. Evans, if you don't mind my saying so, sir, I think you should make a fine master of this household. I know from mine own part that I should be very happy to have you. Why, Mr. Quincy? I do believe you're right. What do you say, Cassius? Shall we marry? And Mother thought I'd never find the right girl. Well, there's the mystery solved, the lovers united, and everyone's honor satisfied. Indeed, Mrs. Broadwater? Oh, yes. I am especially grateful to Miss Pembroke for saving my niece's honor with a suitable gentleman. Grateful enough that perhaps she and I should discuss some investments I've been meaning to make. I feel as though she'd be the right person. Why, madam, we should be honored. Yes, of course, you should, of course. I should like to work with someone I can trust. Very naturally, madam. We all know what you can count on from me. Rosalind, if Theo's free now... Oh, no. Why, you're right, Cora. I'm a free man. Oh, no. I know it may seem as if I've rather dishonored myself just now, but you'll find that my heart is true, I promise. What do I... Propose! What? 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 Trust him. Propose. Ah, dearest Theo, it's the day we've been praying for. Now at last we can be wed. <gasps> yes, ah, uh, that is, wed, did you say? Of course, it's what we've been longing for, isn't it? Oh, well, of course it is. Of course it is moving rather quickly, wouldn't you say? 
Why, Theo, whatever do you mean? Well, just that oughtn't we wait a while, observe the proprieties and, and all that? Capital idea, Theo. Get a little travel in, see the world, heal the spirit from these events. Oh yes, the spirit, the, the, the old spirit's just shot through, my dear. <laughs> like a pigeon at a Scottish hunt. But nothing like the high seas for healing. Consign it all to the waves. <laughs> you, you understand, don't you? Are you quite certain? Because I've always fancied a dress of Honiton lace, and six children at least. I've already picked out their names. Oh dear, uh, Justin and Hope Boy, make my apologies. But what about we and Aurea and Roderick? Can't you just imagine their dear little faces? Theo, Theo, come back! <sighs> Morgan, dear man, would you be so kind as to help Lord Cornyn pack? Of course, sir, and thank you, sir. <laughs> Think nothing of it, old man. And now, is that it now? Any other troubles need solving? Because if not, I'm off for a pint. You're on your own. Well, Miss Little, I'd ask if Theo accepted your gracious proposal, but I can tell from your smile that he did not. Yes, that galloping sound you may have heard was Theo stealing a team of horses to get as far away as possible. And what shall you do now that he's not breathing down your neck? Well, Annabelle's found a much more appropriate match, so she won't need a companion much longer. Miss Pembroke has graciously offered me a place traveling with her. So you shall get to see the world at last. Yes, you've inspired me. I wanted to ask, Mr. Morgan, Peter, if I might write to you, if you would care to write me back. I should like that very much, Miss Cora. Ah, Morgan. I can see by the gleam in your eye, you've heard Miss Little's good news. Yes, sir. He's regaled me of the fun to be had, trotting the globe in the right company. And I assure you, Cora, dear, Mr. Hawking's got nothing on me. Well, lest you believe that, I wanted to give you the afternoon off, Mr. Morgan, so that you could enjoy Miss Broadwater's engagement party. Why, perhaps he'll accompany me then, <laughs> if he'd be so kind? He can, Miss. But only if you'll continue talking about him as though he's not there, he's keen to hear what you say behind his back. Well, I find it's done us well enough so far. Ah, young love. How exhausting. I must say, Justin, you've been quite the gallant all around. Who'd have thought the old dog would have it in him? Not me, that's certain. By the by, Hawking, I shall have access to my own money soon. And when I do, perhaps... We can discuss what you think I ought to do with it. Nothing would please me more, miss. See you at the party, Hawking. I'll have Quincy save you a glass of champagne. And I'll have nobody save you a glass of nothing. Nothing would please you more? Is that so? Why, Miss Pembroke, don't you clean up nicely? Yes, there's a silk purse beneath all the sow's ear. I can say the same for you, except then it would only go to your head. I am struggling a bit to keep it upright these days. And dear Hector's taught us the dangers of that. Well, the engagement party's arrived. I can't say either one of us lost since we're both walking away with some Broadwater money. Call it a draw, then. I prefer to say we both won. In that case, can we both claim a prize? I believe the terms were that I'd walk into the party on your arm, and I could make you take Cora in my place. But since your little switch with Mr. Morgan, I believe that's been rather satisfied. In light of that, I do still have Cora's mask. You're still in the spirit of things. Oh, dear girl, I shall miss you when we're gone. Who's to say we'll not cross paths again? After all, I can't imagine we'll never be competing for the same clients. Well, Mr. Morgan and Miss Little shall enjoy that. I know I, for one, shall relish the competition. I beg you, bring it, miss. For now, I do believe most of the household is taken up with the engagement party, and there are quite a few rooms in the house now quite removed from anyone's attention. As I said, miss, I beg you bring it. And there you have it. Were you blown away? 
Or do you expect such color and pageantry in my life? I had always wondered how Cash Evans came suddenly into money, but I never imagined there was a story behind it. And what do you think of my detective skills, in your semi-professional opinion? I suppose you stumbled into a few techniques to decent effect. Lying in wait for a blighter who tackled you in the knee? <laughs> I'm more impressed by your people skills. Well, those were never in question. Those aren't the ones I mean. Well, I was under orders to come back with my shield or on it. Didn't want to let down my commanding officer. You cut through to the heart of quite a few matters. It was kind of you to take on so much for those who couldn't manage on their own. Didn't think I had it in me, did you? Oh, I always figured there was more to you than free suppers and loose girls. Don't you dare spread that rumor around. I've got a reputation to maintain. Oh, you needn't fear. I delight in telling everyone you're a rake. <laughs> I take it I have cheered you? That was, after all, my goal. At ease, soldier. You've done well. Although, I have to ask. What Miss Pembroke told you at the party. Yes. Did the two of you really slip away to... For goodness sake, I don't know how many times I have to say it. A gentleman never tells. And that was Gentlemen Never Tell, the very first Mrs. Hawking spinoff. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. And if you'd like to follow our work, see what we're up to, or catch up on previous episodes, please check us out on the web at www.mrshawking.com. Thank you and good night.